Shout out to everybody joining us on the live stream. Welcome, we're here at our open house, November 10th, 2018. Got a really great group of people coming in today. So yeah, share this out. And uh, anybody who's interested in seeing what the coral farm looks like, you just couldn't make it, share it out so we can uh, get everyone who's involved. Finally get to shake your hand, Eric. I'm Ben, I'm always on your live feeds. Always. Yeah. Well, now you're now you're well, really on the live feed. <laughs> right <now. laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, Kevin better be here. Yeah, a great group of people here today, guys. Thanks for stopping by the stream. Thanks for joining us. We're gonna be streaming for probably about half an hour to an hour somewhere in there. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we're gonna take you guys along on the tour. We got some of the other uh, facility employees over there. They're gonna give us a great tour today. We got the man himself. Go talk to Kevin. Yeah, we're gonna show you some cool stuff. A little behind the scenes, we got our, some of our warehouse supply. Hey Kevin, this is our live aquarium warehouse. So we got some uh, captive breadfish over here. We've expanded those systems recently. We got our uh, packing station right here. Wisconsin, yeah. Yeah, Wisconsin, sorry. Yeah, we're at a Wisconsin facility here. Hey, Patty, thanks for doing in. We were coming out of the zoo on Thursday. Yeah, you're welcome, Kevin. Thanks for joining in. So if anybody's just joining us, this is a live stream of our open house. Uh, we try to do these every year, and this is one we're doing here this November. Uh, Kostov, I don't believe our salt is available in Europe yet, but uh, stay tuned, you never know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this is our open house. If you're just joining us, this is going to be like you're here, but in a digital way. Uh, we'll take you along with the tour. Our man Steve here. He's our uh, sort of a manager of the building. Make sure everything gets done on a daily basis. Operations manager, if you will. We got some giveaways today for people attending. Yeah, this freshwater tank we've been growing out this out for I don't know about half a year now, I think. Hey, it's in here. Beautiful. Hey, Tim. Thanks for joining us. I think the tour is going to be starting yeah. here pretty soon, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Listen, how are you doing? Still so good. Yeah, let's go over yeah, here. Yeah, let's go over here. Here's the real star of the show. Welcome to our open <laughs> house. We are toward the back of the pack out area, but what's neat here, we have a lot of fish staged for the shoppers, and most of these fish you're going to see here are all captive bred. We do uh, get a lot of our fish from ORA, Biota, and uh, Bali Aqua Rich. How you doing, Vic? Pretty good. How are you? Good. As you can see, we've got everything from clownfish, we've got watchmen gobies, we've got adorable little coral beauties. These are all captive bred. That coral beauty is about the size of a quarter. So typically we get them in and we keep them in house at least a few weeks. We make sure they're eating, make sure they're healthy. And of course, these fish, like all the fish from Live Aquarium or Diverse Den, they come with a 14 day arrive alive, stay alive guarantee. What else we got? Down here we've got a lot of file fish. Oh, yeah. These are really cool. So if you want to have an, somebody on Aptasia patrol and take care of your Aptasia, file fish will do it. Some people have success in a reef aquarium with them and others don't. So you just kind of have to try them out. Every tank is different. Next door we've got Rainford's gobies. We've got yeah. pajama cardinals. We got blennies, and again, all these fish you're seeing here in this system, these are all captive bred fish. So they come from Biota, ORA, and uh, Bali Aqua Ridge. So we got some more on the other side. Cool. 
through a little dance here. More clowns. Here we got a ton of Rainford's gobies oh, down yeah. wow. here. Again, these are all captive bred. And we've got a lot of beautiful quarter size coral beauties. Just great, awesome, beautiful little fish. And those we usually get from uh, Bali Opera Ridge. More clownfish. Here we're getting into some more unique clowns, or onyx. It's a nice pretty pair right here. And these are these are new to market too. These are, we've got some Cuban hogfish down here. And these are captive bred as well. Beautiful fish. So we've got a lot of captive bred fish here. Hey Brian, yeah, we'll be running uh, the open house tour, I believe, until 2 p.m. today. Yes. So just yep. open, 10.30, just open, and uh, yeah, we'll be here till 2 o'clock. Live stream's probably going to go for about a half an hour to an hour, somewhere in there. Absolutely. So again, if you're just joining us, thanks for joining us. We're coming to you live from our open house here in Rhinelander, Wisconsin. We like to open our doors once or twice a year because we're not normally open to the public. So we like to bring everybody in and obviously show off all our fantastic aquatic life, our facility. Here we're at the back end of the facility. This is our pack out area. So after the orders are shopped, they're all brought here. We've got pure oxygen that we fill the bags with. We've got clip machines. And then the orders get fulfilled over here. Insulated styrofoam boxes. Obviously this time of year we're using heat packs. In the summer we use cool yeah, packs. We got, we got some good snow last night. We got a couple inches, right? Yeah, we did. We'll have to show the juxtaposition between yeah. inside here and outside. So. All right. Let's take a stroll over here. We've got some neat fish in our clown system. So these are some of our resident clownfish pairs. And uh, about a week or so ago, I posted on Sorry Instagram. We had four pairs all breed at one night. So I don't know if it had anything to do with the full moon or not, but it was really, really cool. So this is, uh, these are, Probably some of our senior residents here. These are these are Kevin's McCulloch clownfish. He acquired these back in I think 2008. These come from a very small area. I don't even know if you can get these fish from the wild anymore, but somehow he was able to procure a pair. And he, Kevin Cohen, was uh, the first person to successfully spawn and, and raise fry in the United States. So that was back in 2009. So they're a little older and a little uglier, but you know what? <laughs> Still impressive. They're, they're part of Live Aquaria. Yeah. So down here we've got a nice pair of Picassos. And these were one of the pairs that spawned as well. And I like these over here myself, Ian. Got a pair of oh, yeah. black snowflake oscillaris. There. Pretty fish. Got a nice big ritter eye anemone up here. Hey, JR, thanks for the thanks for the shout out there. Glad you're enjoying the fish. Big ritter eye anemones. So yeah, you guys just uh, hang with us and we're gonna show you all different aspects and parts of the coral farm. We'll show you lots of different fish. We've got some more captive bred fish we're excited to show you. And uh, let's go see if we can, uh, well, we'll work we our way through here. House, but yeah, we'll, we'll work our way through. Take a peek. Yeah, if you guys, again, are just joining us, and if you think anybody would like to come along on this digital tour, you know, share it out, include them, tag them in the comments, do whatever you like. Uh, we want to get as many participants as we can and just kind of share this uh, awesome event. Let's take a stroll back here, pardon me, sir. Bro, how are you doing today? Good. So what you're seeing here, these fish have all been in this facility at least two weeks. They've been photographed, and these are all on Divers Den now because they all have a SKU number. So if you're interested in any one of these fish, you can find them on Divers Den. The only reason you wouldn't see them on Divers Den is because they've been sold. Ian, come back here to this Erythron Golden Puffer. We sell a lot of these. Uh, I love puffers. They're one of my favorite fish, whether they're marine or freshwater. If you follow me on Instagram or follow Live Aquaria on Instagram, you'll see I I put a lot of puffers up there. I'm yeah, pretty partial to them. <laughs> Kevin wants guys. a puffer. There's oh, a, yeah, this a guy nice porcupine. Cooler. What I like about this, he's he's not your typical light tan or yellow color. He's kind of gray. I guess in the reptile world, you almost call that like xanthic. Yeah. I'm not calling him that, but that's what he looks like. It looks really cool. Got a beautiful French angel next door to him. Oh, my favorite. I love French angels. 
Ben, all these fish right now are on Diver's Den. The only reason you wouldn't see them is if they're sold. Yeah, it's beautiful tasseled file fish. We've actually got a couple of these in house. Very cool. And we apologize for the lighting in here. You know, it's just too cumbersome to have strip lights on all these aquariums. So we go with overhead. So sometimes that's why you're going to have some glare and not really see the true color of the fish. But and it, and it keeps them a little calmer too. You know, fish don't typically need light. It's got a nice, nice. Hi guys. <laughs> nice emperor down there. Probably recently transitioned. Beautiful yeah. fish. It's probably about five inches. Hey Brian, thanks for joining us. Gorgeous naso oh, tang yeah. in here. Everybody's looking real healthy today. Yeah. And again, all these fish are on divers' den. So the section of the coral farm we're in right now, these uh, all these fish are for sale. So they've been here a minimum two weeks through the quarantine. Usually, sometimes even longer. We've got them feeding. We don't put anything up on divers' den that isn't healthy or isn't eating. So. All right, cool. All right. So, Moe's yeah, through. Look at all these great people we got in our tour today. Yeah. You know, if you guys ever want to catch one of the future tours or aren't able to make it this time, you know, you can go to our website um, yeah, or in Seattle, send, send us a message on Facebook and we'll link you to the page on the website and like, sign up. Um, so, yeah, otherwise, you can always count on our live streams. We'll do these every time we have an open house and you guys can join us that way if, uh, you know, if distance is an issue. Yeah. 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 Are they hard to take care of? No, they're very hard. Very, That's very, what's great about them. Emperor That's Jewel. what's great. Warriors of Tanks. Oh, the Osprey Angel? Yeah. They're Andy Alaric, oh. Cincinnati. Oh, wow. I didn't see this castle <laughs> file. It's like that blue one. Yeah, it's blue lines are beautiful fish. No tanks you can make them? So we have some fish boxes here, oh, yeah, yeah. and this people might think, why do you keep them in such small boxes? It's just because they're so little, and we don't want them to jump out. So that's a beautiful little orange back basslet. So that's great for a little nano reef. Very hardy little fish. Hey, shout out to Brandon about the place you order. That's awesome. Thank you so much. It's a deep water Curacao candy basslet. <laughs> Very beautiful. Ian scares the fish. I scare him. Nice little rock beauty. Look how Good yellow it is yet. Look at you. Beautiful. That big, that blue spot will just get bigger as he gets older. And very similar as a bicolor angel. Yeah. I'm slowly starting to fall in love with Yep. It's not hard. It's not hard. Ian, yeah, let's see if we got our Clarion Angel in here. So we were able to get a couple of these this year. This is, this is Captive Bread from Bali Aqua Rich by Mr. Wenpen Su. So we were fortunate enough to acquire two of these this year. It's a beautiful fish, similar in looks to a Passer Angel. Definitely commands a high price, but super beautiful, super unique. Yeah, and the reason these fish are so expensive is because they, they're only endemic to such a small area off of Baja, Mex or California, and a couple little islands off of uh, Mexico. So, Bali Aqua Rich was able to acquire some adults years ago, and uh, they've had luck breeding them. Awesome. So we're the benefactor. You got any of those orange spotted fowl fish, Kev? Yeah, there was. Eric, we'll, we'll get it's around like almost to a them. Cabin. <laughs> Yeah, so the orange spotted file fish, you know, typically they're, uh, they're a coral eater. So what we do, we keep them here a minimum of a month and we transition them over to brine and mice of shrimp. So again, that's a fish we do not sell until they are successfully eating brine and mice of shrimp. So we'll get to some of those as we mosey on over. How's Everybody it going, Rory? Say hi to Rory. He's, uh, he's one of our hard workers here in the coral farm. Everybody that works in the coral farm has a very responsible job. You know, it's like it's like working a dairy farm. The cows got to get milk, the animals got to get taken care of, fish got to get fed. So Rory is one of our shoppers, and obviously he does a ton more than that. So if you buy fish off a diver's den, they were shot by this guy. So Rory, how long have you been with us? Been four years in December. Four years. So yeah, Rory's an asset. All of our employees are assets, and uh, 
we have fun. I walk through here and Rory gives me the business <laughs> once in a while. You know, we have, we have friendly banter. Don't we? That's right. So, we're family right. here. We're a family. That's right. We're a fish family. Yeah, that's a beauty. Yeah, we get on the other side, we've, we've got a lot of nice blue line triggers. Speaking of blue, beautiful blue faced angel. We sell a lot of these. Beautiful. All right, leave hey, away. Who we got? We All got right. the man, the myth, our director, Mr. Kevin Cohen. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to our open house. Yeah. So Great time. Great people here today, don't we? We, we just showed everybody the Passer Angel. Why don't we show them that little perch that you were telling me about earlier in the week? Yeah. Kevin can fill you in. We were able to acquire a unique fish. There he is. He's on that piece of faux coral there in back. We apologize for the glare, folks. So Kevin, tell us about this fish. So this, this fish in the corner here, this is called uh, Plecturanthius pelliceri, and this fish is uh, pretty pretty unique in that it's related to Antheus. Um, it's in the basilet family, and it's really closely related to Antheus. It kind of has a behavior like a hawk fish. Yeah. So they really like to hop around on on you know structure or rock work. Sorry about that. Oh, you're fine. Um, these guys, this guy right here is from New Caledonia in the South Pacific. But their, their range is pretty um, pretty broad. These fish are also found all the way in the Western Indian Ocean um, in Madagascar Beautiful and Mauritius. Coloring. Yeah, just an amazing, amazing little fish. Wow. Um, they are incredibly expensive. Um, this fish is about $2,000. $2,000, okay. Um, I actually had a pair of these guys in my office yeah. aquarium about four years ago I was or five say, years ago. I think I, I've seen some photos from you in the yeah. past of uh, these guys. So just again, a really, really unique, cool fish. Um, we we have other Plectoranthias available as well. Plectoranthias enormous is one of the more common Plectoranthias out of um, Asia, and those fish are a, a lot more affordable than, than this guy here. But just a beautiful specimen. Yeah. Oh, and there's our there's our orange spotted file fish. Oh, there you go, Kevin. We were just talking about the file fish and how we get them from short supply chain, which is critical and how we have them a minimum a month and we transition them over to usually frozen brine and mysis because they're an obligatory coral eater, correct? Yeah, these guys in the, in the wild, they're, they're always around staghorn corals or, or, or tabling acropora corals and that's, they eat acropora polyps. So these guys come from Fiji. Um, and again, as Eric said, very short supply chain. We know who collected the fish. We know where it was collected um, and when it was exported, when it comes to our facility. So the, the Again, the chain of custody is, is very short, and that enables us to be able to transition these fish over to a prepared diet um, much better than, than say, orange spotted file fish that come from very long supply chains and have maybe nutritional issues before we even receive them into our building. So. Very cool. Yeah, and for those of you new to live aquaria, I mean, Kevin has been in the industry, what, almost 30 years? Yeah, yes, 30 years. So Kevin has formed and forged several relationships with with everybody at ORA, with Bali Akarich, with Biota Palau, um, Rising Tide Conservation, the Coral Restoration Foundation, and PJAC. So Kevin, through his networking, has built these special relationships that allow us to procure and bring in fish that not everybody else can do. So it's it's pretty fantastic. Nice work. Thank you. Thanks for your time, Kevin. Hey, you bet. Just gonna keep showing people away here. All right. We'll let everybody go pick your brain because Kevin's always in high demand here at these things. Hey, we've got some great seahorses oh, yeah. up here. And again, you know, these are all captive bred, so we get these guys from ORA. For those of you looking to get into the seahorse arena, Hippocampus erectus, it's a great seahorse to start off with. They're very hardy. Again, these are captain bred, they attain a decent size. And we have them feeding on brine shrimp, mysis shrimp. In seahorses, you need to feed them several times throughout the day because they don't really have a stomach. They have a short digest digestive tract. So the food passes through them relatively quickly, which means they don't absorb a ton of nutrients, hence the several feedings throughout the day. Very cool. Yeah. Got a good. lot of those. Yeah. Got some little half spine ones down here. These are New Caledonian. And you don't see these as often. 
Hey Zach from Ohio, thanks for stopping by. Again, for anybody just joining us on the live stream, this is our open house. This is something we do as often as we can, at least once or twice a year, where we have the public come in and get the tour of the facility and then uh, so, even make some purchases. Absolutely. So right now we're in the main fish system. So all these fish in this system, Back up again. they run off of that filtration. So every system's water is separate. So we've got about 4,000 gallons in the system here. Got a monster protein skimmer. We've got a fluidized sand bed. We've got, got a shot of the arcade six, I'm, So I'm 6'4. <laughs> this thing's taller than me. This has got to be 8 feet tall. Maybe yeah. 7 and a half. These, these are the backbone and the workhorse of all of our systems here. Every system, saltwater, has one of these massive protein skimmers. We've got a giant UV sterilizer. We've got, I think, close to 900 watts. These are algamin bulbs. We've got our heater chiller up there. And for a UV sterilizer to be effective, you have to have that water as clear as possible so the water passes through these Baker, car Baker cartridges here. So there's pleated micron cartridges in here, and they're huge. And these get taken out a couple times a week. They get cleaned, and they go back in. This is our ballast and controller for the UV. I always like to call this, what do I call this, Ian? The flux capacitor. Flux capacitor. <laughs> That's right, it that took me a second. Flux capacitor. Kevin, I think, Kevin flux. asked, I think we're looking at 4,000 gallons just within this system here. Yep, yep. Yeah, 4,000 gallons, Kevin. Yep. I think and in total we're looking at 20,000 or 30,000 drill facility? 30,000. 30,000 drill at the whole facility. So here's all our designer clowns. Again, most of these come from ORA. So they're all captive bred. They come in there, they're healthy, they're fit, they eat well. And with all these systems in here, these fish get fed three to four times a day. We feed very heavy. We want to make sure these fish go out fat and happy. And then at the end of the day, they come through and they siphon all the excess out because we don't want it to bog down the system biologically at night. So that's a lot of food and a lot of nutrients that's just hanging in there. So again, we've got all sorts of, we've got beautiful sailfin down here. We've got a regal, we've got heniocus, fox face. So these fish, um, have come over from the QT system, they're in the main system, so they stay here and then eventually they'll get photographed and these will be for sale on Diver's Den. And, uh, Brandon's asking if we have any red mandarins. I think we do. We've got some over in the invert section and we'll, we'll slowly work over there, Brandon, so hang in there with us. Again, these, these are all fish boxes and these are for little fish that we don't want to worry about getting caught in the intake or jumping out or getting eaten. So awesome. we've got everything from gobies to blennies. We've got some little pink bar blennies. Got a Dracula goby in here. Ooh. Actually holding this for our friend Sanjay. Nice little captive bread basslet. Oh yeah. Got a working dotty bat. Let's Very see if we can find some uh, frogfish in anglers. Oh yeah, frogfish. Run it in here now. All right. It's kind of cool. The blue boxfish. There we go. He's a blemish, so he's on sale. He's got something wrong with uh, apparently his vision. And just for all you out there, we have never had an issue with a boxfish releasing toxins in our system. So I think that's one of those things that maybe happened here and there and then got embellished, but we have never had an issue losing fish due to a fox fish or due to a box fish parasite. Hey Brett, um, open houses in the summer do happen. Um, we didn't, we weren't able to get any, any in this year, but stay tuned for 2019. Uh, I'd say it's a high possibility that we'll be able to do that. Again, if you have any other questions about our open houses in the future, go, feel free to send us a message uh, on Facebook and we'll be sure to hook you up with the right information. Is this is a Blue Line Trigger. This is a great fish only with live rock tank. We sell a lot of these bad boys. And again, you know, if we had a strip light over here, this color would be that much more impressive. But the strip lights are just too cumbersome out here because we're always in and out of the tanks and with the moisture, it just it kills it in here. And we're asking for puffers, so here gold you go. Puffer. Nice golden puffer. So we sell a lot of those golden puffers. Here we've got a spiny box here. You go, Rose. Up here. Yeah, nice spiny box. 
Next door we've got a scribbled Napa puffer. Those are one of my favorites, but those things get huge, so you need a very big tank for those. Oh, who, how huge do they get? Oh, I think this guy can get close to it, at least two and a half feet. Two and a half feet, folks. Maybe Proceed with caution. <laughs> Proceed with caution. <laughs> I set my, my artist butterfly down there. Oh, wow, yeah. We got Morris Idol in there. Yeah. And you know, like Ian said, if you guys have questions, send them in on Facebook because between myself, Ian, and Kelvin, we usually take care of uh, messages. You know, typically normal business hours, there might be a lag on the weekend. We've got some nice Harlequin Tusk Swats. Uh, we just did a nice deep dive video on those that'll be coming out pretty soon. We we got a we're able to get I think we've got five or six of these. They're anywhere from Australia to Indonesian tusk grasses in the house. They're five to six inches long. We've got some blonde vaso tanks in there. But the tusk grass is a great fish only with live rock tank. They they are reef safe, but they'll eat any invertebrate you have in there. That's nice. that's the downside. So Ian up here we've got a nice black angler. I love anglers. Ooh, there he is. He's blinding them right here. It looks yeah. like a rock. Very cool. Yeah, we have that big white one I nicknamed Casper on That's Instagram. Right. He went off this he week. So no, I was, was going to say, I was looking for him. him. I didn't see him. There's a wart skin angler. There we go. I love these fish. Yeah, these anglers are awesome. Obviously, they hang out at the bottom and they try and blend in with their surroundings. They're either ambush predator or they, they fish and try to lure somebody in. Any juvenile colored tusks, Brian asks. No juveniles. We've been no trying juveniles. to get some small ones because I've been working with my friend out there, Julian, on Facebook. He's been wanting one. Typically, lately, they've been coming in five to six inches. There's a nice big blue line trigger. All right, pal. And then, Jason, you're looking for carpet and enemies. I think we can. I think we can definitely facilitate that. <laughs> well, Jason, if you hang in there a little bit, we're going to Steve's office. He's got some big Haddon's carpets and enemies. Oh, that's there. right. But we've got a lot of nice bubbles. We'll show you one of our newer tanks we set up in the foyer. So just hang with us, guys. We're just going to keep this tour rolling. And uh, thanks for joining us. So we're going to go around to our QT system so we can talk a little bit about that. Uh, great people. Look, we got a packed house today. Right. So over here, this is our quarantine system. So all fish are in here a minimum of two weeks. And we do get a lot of questions about QT. We do use copper and we use a special form of it because we run ozone in our skimmer. So it has to be a non-ionic copper. Kevin could probably give you the details on yeah. that. I can. And we do go hypo salinity. So we're usually somewhere around 1718 but obviously we take time acclimating the fish before they go back to the main system. All those containers back there, drip lines, are what we acclimate the fish with. So we bring them up to 2.5 and then we take them over to the main system. So again, um, typically the gentleman back there in the blue shirt, that's John King. He's our, he's our fish. He's our fish quarantine expert. John handles many boxes throughout the week. Yeah, he's a very busy man. He, he gets anywhere from 150 to 300 boxes of fish a week. So amazing, again, amazing team everybody in this coral farm, they bust their tail off. We've, we've got ultra cool jobs. They're yeah. unique. We love our jobs, but yeah. they work really hard too. They yeah. really do. So again, we've got a lot of beautiful angels in. Got I, mean, see, I gotta ask a question here. Uh, Brett, yeah, Brett, you asked about the uh, people can purchase at the open house. They, they do have the option to buy at the open house. Yeah, there's yeah. a there's educational aspect, aspect that we try to do with uh, all of our team members here, but also um, people do have the option to buy as well. Here we, we've got a beautiful Caribbean queen angel. It's almost turquoise, kind of like purple and blue. Just a gorgeous yeah. fish. Oh my gosh. I'm really glad the camera's doing this fish some yeah. justice. Like, yeah. It is. It's definitely nothing like staying in front of it, but it's beautiful more. fish. They, they can end up running your tank, so sometimes with the holocanthus yeah. and palmacanthus, you can run into that. Next door, we got an awesome red tail trigger. Yeah, Clayton, we're, uh, we're located in northern Wisconsin in a town called Rhinelander. So, uh, interestingly enough, it's a nice tropical <laughs> 75, 76 in here. Yeah, and, we'll show and, you. Uh, we got some snow it's like night, 18 too. outside, so yeah. kind of a weird. Uh, Weird thing we got going on, but we love it. Yep, got a nice undulated trigger down here. A little more aggressive, but very, very hardy fish. And for anybody who's not really 
familiar with any of uh, our um, any any of us really, you can go to liveaquaria.com or check us out on Facebook or Instagram, and uh, you guys can really get in tune with what we have and what we do, as well as our YouTube channel. We have a lot of educational videos. Eric does a great job here with the rest of the crew to produce. Uh, weekly educational videos about the different aquarium species yeah. we have in here, yeah. fish, coral, and birds. So check us out. Absolutely. So speaking of undulated triggers, I um, I have a, I have conversations occasionally with a gentleman on Facebook. His name is Rodney. And he has uh, undulated. He bought from us back in like 2012, and he sent me some pictures of it. And it's got blues and purples. It is the most gorgeous undulated trigger I've ever seen. So Rodney, if you're watching, good job. Keep it up. Okay, here we've got some more of my favorites. Beautiful. I love scorpion fish. I put a lot of scorpions on Instagram. So we've got two different types of rhinopias in here. We've got the weedy scorpion fish. So that's rhinopias frondosa, beautiful fish. And then we've got the Eschmeyer's uh, scorpion fish on his left, which is beautiful. And he's, he's got some nice markings on him too. So. Brandon asks what our favorite grass is in stock. Ooh, that's a good question. That is a good question. We've got some Leonard's in stock, um, but maybe when we get to the show tank, we'll show you some of our favorites. You yeah. know, that's a hard question some to more, answer. Some more puffer fanatics will be happy. Look at you. Yeah. Oh. These guys are just garbage cans. <laughs> we, we, we feed them uh, clams on the half shell. They eat everything. Oh, look so. at that, look at that, that big beak. That's where the clams come in. They kind of naturally wear that. Those tooth plates are beak down. And these guys are coming in how big right now? I think those are probably 9, 10 inches. Nine, ten inches yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. We got one more scorpion in there. Just hiding back there. He's chilling. I got something for Brandon. All right, Brandon, here's one of my favorites. We got a nice Leonard's Rass down. Oh, yeah, yeah. And when we get to Steve's office, we have a real unique one that's kind of a golden color. Our director, Kevin, has never seen anything like it. So there's your nice Leonard's. Got some beautiful Anthias in there. These are, remember we saw these at Macca? Those reef fish. Oh, yeah. I apologize, I don't remember the species name on those, but if you put that fish in a brighter tank with a, with a white substrate, you right. see all the purple in between the yellow. It's a beautiful uh, fish. It's, it's, uh, I wish it came through on the camera post. <laughs> That's all right. We got some more rasses up here, yeah? Got lemon peel angel. We got an exquisite fairy rass. We got a couple of them. Oh, yeah. We got Toby puffer. We love our puffers. Brennan asks if the uh, when are asking flat ones? Well, I'm sure if there was some in there, yeah. you would. <laughs> <laughs> what do we usually feed them? Uh, we feed them brine shrimp, mysis. We, we feed a heavy variety. And a lot of our fish, we've got them eating pellets. Um, our friends Les and Vero at Cobalt, they've come up with an ultramarine pellet. It's awesome. Yeah. People love it. It's got prebiotics, probiotics, heavy protein, lots of nutrition, amino acids, fatty acids, everything cool. you need. Any Scott's rasses? Yeah, I think we got something. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can find for you, Brandon. All right, Kevin will probably be mad at me for giving you guys a sneak peek of one of our Black Friday deals. Oh. We're not going to tell you how much they are, but we're loading up on these guys. Oh. We got some dragon eels, Japanese dragon eels. And these are Japanese. These aren't Hawaiian, so we wouldn't bring them in from Hawaii. But these are beautiful. And for those of you who have a big fish only with a live rock tank or predator tank, if you're looking for one of these, we're going to have a great price for you. I believe this is going to be one of our Black Friday deals. So just stay in touch because we're going to be blowing these things out. Of course, you got the iconic Flame Angel. These guys are always popular on Instagram. Oh, yeah. The Marine Battles. So it's interesting between that one and then this one has real fine dots on it. Oh yeah. Kevin says, source me a Scott's Ferry or else from one of the Cook Islands. I'll pay more than I should for one. We'll see. We got some more eels down here. Another scorpion. We've got a wasp fish. Very cool. I love all the oddballs. Yeah, me too. There's another smaller dragon eel. <laughs> hey guys. 
Any tags? Yeah, I think we got some tags. I mean, we did show some tags earlier in the stream, oh, but yeah. if, you know what? if you're just show, if you just join us, we got some other tags. Yeah. To show so yeah, if you're just oh, yeah. joining us, welcome to uh, our open remember. house <laughs> and tour. This is, uh, yeah, we open our doors. We try to open our doors a couple times a year to the public and enthusiasts and aquarists. Unfortunately, this year we've been so busy. This is our first one of the year, so. We're in the coral farm. We just kind of went through and saw a bunch of saltwater fish, but it wouldn't be fair if we didn't give some of our freshwater oh, yeah. fish some, yeah. some camera time here. So yeah, we bring in a lot of discus. Um, we get it from our suppliers who work with the farms in Malaysia and Thailand where they breed all the these. So we've got everything from pigeon boards to checkerboards. This is a beautiful one. I know, I'm like... So they call it a pigeon I'm smitten. Blood, pigeon blood polka dot. Yeah, yellow pigeon blood. Cool. So all of these fish on this side, if you're interested in them, they are usually on diver's den. The only reason they wouldn't be there is if somebody bought them already. I love geos. I love anything from the geophagus species. These are altifrons and they're just starting to get their adult colors. It's a fish that could Probably easily double in size. They're probably about five inches right now. I think we have one similar to this. So we did. Or was it we did. I think it was. Or? I think it was misnomered as a Surinamensis, but oh, was somebody okay. was kind enough to let us know it wasn't all. It was an Okay. Some beautiful old marbles. Oh. Got some nice cats down here. Yeah. Ornate pin cats. Little marble angels. I saw this nice big black hole and I want to show him before. Yeah, we gotta go around. I believe that's big sunshine black hole. Sweet. Yeah, that's a big one. That is a big one. How you doing? Good. Good. Yeah, let's uh, back up a second. Sure, sure. So we've been able to get some real nice guppies lately for you guppy fanatics out there. These are our black Sakura guppies. I think these are actually one of my favorite guppies between how dark they get and that, that iridescence in their dorsal fin and their tail fin are just beautiful. These are pretty unique. Got some albino heckle cichlids down here with some of my favorite fish, clown roaches. I love any of the loaches. Uh, clown loaches love to be in, in numbers of three or more. And what's cool about this fish, if you've never had it, the more of them you get, the busier they are. And they're like these aquatic acrobats. They yeah. swim up and down, they play follow the Very leader. Cool they're just goofballs. But these will be beautiful. They're just starting to color up. Yeah. Kevin was wondering how much that uh, Leonard I was. was. Don't hold me to it, but those usually run about 1200 I think. I think you can check out the website, too. Uh, it should be on the website, right? Or those are in QT. That's still, in so. QT. So yeah, I think 1200 sounds about right. Now. Yeah. It's a nice electric blue rams down there. Yeah, cool. These are obviously popular for very many reasons. They're just a nice, beautiful, peaceful little cichlid. Get along with community very fish. Bright, very colorful. Adds a nice, a lot of nice color and contrast to anybody's freshwater aquarium. Yeah, we got a lot of angels in this week. Wow. Angels. Very cool. These guys are all like uh, attention. Yeah. Like, all right. Nice leopards and marble angels in there. People love South American puffers. There's more puffers. So we're, we're these guys just came in this week, so we gotta fatten them up a little bit. You know, sometimes when they come from our wholesaler, they come in a little thin. Hey so, Sheldon, no, we're not done with marine. We got plenty more marine yeah, to we're, show. We're getting back. This is cool, yeah. We got some real small black widow frontosas. Oh, yeah. And we did a video on this one. We you, did, right? yeah. we did. So check out our YouTube channel if you want to see some more information on the black widow frontosas. These are one of my favorite. Black calvus compressiceps. Cool. Alto lamprologus calvus. They're awesome. Puffer. True freshwater puffer. Straight out of Congo, I like to say. Yeah, these guys get big. <laughs> These guys get real big. So this is a fish you definitely want to do your research on. Do your homework. He's gonna eat a ton and he's gonna need a ton of space. Awesome. Alright. Well let's 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 uh, let's head on over to the marine area again. I think um, we've got some really special uh, captive red tangs, right? We gotta do one thing real quick. Oh alright. Give you guys a little bit of an idea of just our our conditions at the moment. Yeah, so 
we do this oh, every cold. time. It's uh, it's nice and warm inside, probably 78 to 80. We got some snow last night. This is our, over here, yeah, now we're talking Tim the Toolman stuff. It's our 130,000 watt generator that runs on yep. natural gas. So if the power goes out, as long as we're getting natural gas, we can run this facility yep. forever. That's so right. it's, it's pretty sweet. Oh, it's nice and warm in here. All right, more marine fish, let's do this. Oh, all right, if you guys are just joining us, or if you think there's anybody that's not in the stream that'd like to do, uh, join us, uh, go ahead and share it out to them or add them in the comments. Yeah, so we apologize for the noise. We've got pumps down here driving the skimmer and the fluid ice sand that What we've got here, this is our RAS system. It's a golden Rambidalis. So this is, these, all these RASs are in QT. Uh, as most of you RAS enthusiasts know, lots of RASs are sensitive to copper. So we have very low levels of copper in here. So again, all the fish that are in QT, they stay over here for two weeks. That's a lot of fairy wrasses. Get a lot of those. So give you guys a kind of perspective on this system. Quite a few little. Uh... It's a it's a nice system. So we got uh, we worked with our friends at ProClear Aquariums, and they built this for us. It's an acrylic system. It's got separate compartments. Cool. Let's show them something cool. I want to see the tank. Right. So everybody out there, we are very proud to offer these. These are four months old. These are true captive bred yellow tanks. So we got these through Biota Aquariums who work with rising tide conservation. And Rising Tide Conservation partnered with the Oni Oceanic Institute in Hawaii. So again, this is, um, this is you know, thanks to some of the relationships that our director Kevin Cohen has forged, we were able to bring these in and we got quite a few of them. So they just came in this week. It'll probably be a few weeks before they're for sale. And uh, they, how many you got in? How many you got in? We have 25 in each vat. We, we were fortunate enough to procure 75 of them. So we got we got plenty to go around this time. Again, these guys are about four months old. So Ian, if you remember when we were at Macna, we saw some that were about sixty to seventy yeah. days old. And they were just transitioning. They were still transparent. So the lights we're using here are the uh, Radeon G4s. You can see with the HEI optics there. We're not using any diffusers. Some of these you use diffusers, but uh, these are it's just, just the, G, uh, the Gen 4s. They're from Biosyn 30s. They're captive red. They're cool. Yeah, so this is really cool. As you can see how well the, the tanks school. This is what they'd be doing in the wild. And we keep them in our vats because they help control algae and it's just it's a natural environment. They keep the corals clean. So yeah, these guys are probably what size of a 50 cent piece or a little smaller. Cool, all right. Collins I ain't there. So let's take a look at some of our squeezed on our invert section. So here we've got a lot of different anemones. You know, rock anemones seem pretty popular lately. So we've got a lot of rock flower anemones. We've been seeing a lot of bubble tips and these are beautiful. So these are these are still technically in QT and as we see that they're doing better, well they're they're all doing well but we, keep, we hang on to them for a couple weeks and then we shoot them. So typically we have three or four bubble tip anemones or rock flower anemones on diver's den. So if you're looking for something unique or nice, go to our diver's den invert section. And of course, these come with the 14 day stay alive, arrive alive, stay alive guarantee as well. So again, this is our open yeah. house if you're just joining us. We've unfortunately only been able to do one of these this year, so that's why there's so much traffic in here. Typically we try to do a couple, but we've just been so busy this year with expansions and other commitments and things that the Coral Farm and Kevin have been tasked with. So we're, we're fortunate enough today to bring this to you. So we'll take awesome. a walk down here. These arms are out This is a pretty cool bat in here. You've got some sea yeah. fans. I think these are older captive bread tanks that we've had for a year or so. 
There are all sorts of clams. A lot of squamosa clams there. And most of the clams we carry are aquaculture. So we get them out of the Marshall Island Mariculture Farms. So we, we get them through our, our captive bred or aquaculture specialists. We have awesome. relationships with them. We're in, uh, hey, Ollie, we're in uh, Wisconsin, in northern Wisconsin called Rhinelander. So we've got some more yellow tangs in here. And we, like I said, I think we've had these a year. We, this is like one of the first batch of captive bred tangs we ever got. We've got some magnificent fox, face, fox faces in there with them. Got some beautiful red mushrooms back there. We got all sorts of torch corals. A lot of eye candy in here. Got some Dianapora, got some candy canes, a little bit of everything. So yeah, thanks again for everybody joining in the live stream. Uh, I think we got a few more things to show you, right? Yeah. So we're not done yet. You feel free uh, to share this out or take somebody below if you haven't already. We've got some cool stuff in Steve's office I want to show you, and then we'll be sure to show you the show tank and the whole course. A little bit of field trip. All right. So this is our, uh, our operations manager and one of our supervisors. So Steve Crow and Patrick Largy are in here. Basically, they handle the day-to-day -day operations of the coral farm and ordering fish. Here's your Haddon's carpet anemones. These are beautiful. We just fed the tank, that's why it's a little hazy. And typically we hang on to the Haddon's for quite a few weeks before we sell them. Awesome. So over here, Ian, this is really cool. We just got these in this week. These are Australian Ningaloo Maxima clams, and you don't see these very often. So if you back up, you can see how they're, they're really kind of robust, mm -hmm. you know? They're bulky. Yeah, definitely different. I don't think I've seen... Yeah, these are nice too. So the big ones are Maximas. Up front we've got some Crocea clams. These are multicolored. These are really cool. What's neat about the Crocea clam is over time it'll actually attach itself to a rock. It'll kind of bore a hole and attach itself to the rock. So that's a clam. If you're going to move it, you're going to have to take the rock with it if it's established. Got some beautiful squamosas this week. I posted this on Instagram the other day. I like to call this Clamorama. <laughs> these are awesome. So yeah, Sheldon these, brings up a good point. Do we have that filter for our lens? We can maybe throw on this thing next time yeah, we go to the Yeah, you know what? Let me go grab that. So show right. them that, that Leonard's Rass in there. That's what I was talking about earlier. That's a unique color variant. We've never seen anything like that. He's kind of golden. So I'm going to go see if I can find the lens. So. Ian, you talk to him and yeah. show him the anemone tank. Very cool. I know uh, Kevin, our director, showed uh, showed me this the other day, and I, it just struck me. It's like how much yellow was in this guy. Let's see if we can get a... There we go. Very beautiful. Yeah. Very different coloration on this large dress, yeah. Very cool. The storms for sale? Uh, I believe so. Um, I, I won't know offhand what they're what they're running for, but they're beautiful, aren't they? I got the lens. You got the lens. All right. So we, what was it sold again? We saw one of these at uh, it's like Polyp Lab. Polyp Lab, yeah, yeah. All right, let's go check out some more corals, huh? All right, throw it on and we'll show them the anemone tank. Let's see if I can do this right. Okay. Sorry, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using a gimbal, so putting this on with the gimbal, it's a little tricky, but we'll figure it out. Alright. So we'll try the lens on this tank, Ian. Alright. Is right. that working? I think so. Yeah. Alright. So this is one of our newer setups we did. We wanted to do an anemone and clownfish tank. We've got a ton of bubble tip anemones in here. We've got some long tentacles. 
and then we've got some gladiator clowns. So what you're looking at here, this tank is the Red Sea XL425, which basically the tank, the display is about 90 gallons. And we've got the Cobalt Sea View lights on it, which we love. Sea rays. Sea ray. Yeah. Sorry, between they the sea ray and the sea and the view. Rays, yeah, yeah these lights. are the Sea Ray 200 uh, from Cobalt. Great light. Uh, we got two of these on top of this Red Sea Aquarium. All right, look at that. Captain Brett Fish found yeah, its way into an anemone. We just put these clowns in the other day. He's digging it. So yeah, he's happy as a clam in there. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful tank. It's just, it's simple. There's something to be said about simple and elegant. So again, this tank is the XL425 Red Sea Reefer. Comes with a pretty substantial size sump. It's got a little reservoir for auto top off. We've got a reef octopus skimmer in it. And um, let's, let's show them your handiwork, Ian. <laughs> and yeah, we're running the, uh, we're, we, we've uh, hooked this thing up with the uh, Apex. So we're still still building this out, still adding some stuff to it. Um, so we just started doing it this week, but uh, we've got the Max Spec Gyre uh, 230. Uh, we've got the core pump driver there. We've got the JVJ True Temp um, heater uh, interface there. Of course, we got the Apex uh, Wi-Fi module and the energy bar here. So um, yeah, we're gonna be adding more to this right now. Pr pretty much all we're doing right now is just kind of the basic stuff, and then we're gonna be adding as we go uh, go further and. You know, look at this as a, a way to produce some content ideas for you guys too. Absolutely. We'll come back Show over here. Tank over here. So this some, is the 180, three, some, three, uh, yeah. Split divided off three yeah. times. So we've got what, 60 gallons each? Yeah. Got some nice Venusta Angels in there. Beautiful copper band butterfly. We've got some nice frags up there. So for those of you not familiar with uh, Live Aquaria and all the corals we have to offer, definitely check out our website. We have tons of frags and for November, every Monday we're going to be announcing the frag of the week. We're going to have them on special sales. So this Monday we've got one coming up. So check our Facebook feed and you'll see all our specials and promotions. Again, we got some beautiful corals here. we got gorgeous bird's nest back there, all sorts of Acropora. Yeah, this is a really cool split on me. Yeah. Got some nice torch corals 180 in total. There. Yeah, you can you can tell it's a, it's an older tank. And we we tried something a little bit different with this one. It's got three different sections, and each uh, each section's got its own specific light uh, fixture. So this one's running a Sea Ray 200. You can see kind of the, uh, the result there. This one's running a couple of Hydra AI Hydra 26 HDs see the uh, results there and then we've got the XR 30 Gen 4 and you can see the results there so we just wanted to kind of take this opportunity with this tank to try out three really high-end lights and kind of see yeah, what we thought. Yeah and that way too you know we we get familiar with the products we're talking about especially when we do the Aquatic Insiders and you know we want to we want to work with these things so yeah. a lot of times when we get samples it's like Christmas because we get to play with them. Oh, yeah. We get to set them up for their application and use them. Let's uh, let's go take a look at our show tank. All right. So we find our aberrant tank. Abby the aberrant. So we've got some people here. <laughs> this tank is always a draw. This is a 300 gallon tank. So we've got a chock full of corals. And Ian, let's show everybody how this tank started. So we set this tank up in 2014. You can see how small some of these corals grow. So this is this is where your high intensity lighting and trace elements and proper salt comes in. So the light I prefer is perfectly the Yeah. Yeah. So we got some old school lights in here. We got some hay lights. And speaking of salt, we use exclusively our own salt throughout the facility. It's award winning. We released it and announced it at Magna two years ago. And we've always got specials on our salt. And you can sign up and get auto delivery. And I believe you get a discount with auto delivery as well. And how great is that? Because who wants to lug a 200 gallon mix of salt? Yeah, have somebody else break their back and deliver to your door. So we'll see if our aberrant tang is in here. Over in the corner there. So we've had that fish about a year and a half now. I'm going to take you behind the scenes a little bit. So just keep an eye on that. I try to buy like a nice man. That fish is a little shy because there's so many people at home. Yeah. yeah, we've got all sorts of wrasses in there because Kevin is a huge wrasse aficionado. I think we've got 
I know we've got at least 15 different species of wrasse in here, so a lot of times people ask me you mix wrasses. I like to liken the analogy to similar to African cichlids. You gotta put a lot of them in, and the aggressive ones, you put in last. So put your more passive species in first, and then put your aggressive species in last. And then when you introduce new ones, do them in groups of three, four, or five. We just put about five wrasses in here the other day. We uh, we did a video for eShop's Tanklimate, and we wanted to show it in its in a real application. Look at all these corals and crusty. I know. We've got some great coral in here. Just living it, loving it. All right. All right. So for those of you who purchase things off a of diver's den, particularly corals, these are the vats they shoot them in. So we have four people on our diver's den team and they work their tails off because we have to switch these out every day and then give the coral time to open up, photograph it, put the coral back, and then put the, the next batch of corals in for the next day. So you can see we've got all sorts. So we've got hammers, we got bubbles, we've got elegans, we've got open grains. Just beautiful. And this is where this little lens clip comes in handy. I forgot we had this. I'm so glad yeah. somebody said yeah, something Yeah, thanks about for that. the suggestion. We've got a beautiful Ganeapora here. We've got all sorts of Acropora we offer. We've got some more stuff staged up over here. A lot of nice pieces. So again, if you're interested in any of these, these will eventually be on Diver's Den. And you can see they sit on a PVC ring. That's how we identify them. They've got a number, so this, this, this ring is the identifier that stays with the coral. These have a ring too, it's just buried underneath. It's a very cool sea slug back there. Those guys eat planaria and flatworms. So they're kind of a, we use those like emerald crabs. We keep them in house, they do a lot of cleaning for us. Over there in the invert system, because we wouldn't have them in here. Oh, this is fragalicious in here. <laughs> Fragtastic. Oh, Fragtastic. Hey, there's your red mandarin. Oh, there it is. That thing's a beast. It's a sighting. Where'd you go? Do I tell you? Oh, yeah. We've got more, but yeah, that's that's a nice mandarin. That thing is probably close to three inches. So he's he's looking for copepods. Sometimes when we get the big wild caught ones in, we feed them copepods until we get them. Uh, transitioned over to brine shrimp and blood and uh, mice's shrimp here. So we got to get down this row here. We've got some very cool inverts in here. Hello. Hi. We got a snake here. What about Got some starfish. We got a little bit of everything. Now you might need the twerk still. Still, yeah. Show them these scarlet shrimp up here. We sell a lot of shrimp. One of their cleaners, or scarlet. Got a little Halloween crab up here. Cool. Harlequin shrimp. Love the harlequins. Anybody who knows these knows they have a special diet of Ascarina starfish. It's very rare that we get them to eat anything else. So we've got some more harlequins up there. We just got these in these one this week. Got some tiny little bongo shrimp. Those are pretty cool. Don't see those too often. At least we don't. We don't bring them in that often. Got our got all sorts of snapping or pistol shrimps. And for those of you new to these guys, they can be a little obnoxious, but a lot of times they will pair up with gobies. So you can get that symbiotic relationship going where the shrimp will dig the burrow and bulldoze everything out, mm -hmm. and then the goby basically, most of them are called watchman goby, they stand guard. Yep. And when they're in the burrow together, the shrimp always keeps an antenna on the goby toward the back. And if, if danger or something threatening comes, the goby does a special flick of his tail so the shrimp knows and they both retreat. Another nice pair of scarlets. So down here again, this is pretty cool. We just started bringing these guys back. I'm sorry, dear. So we've got a Starry Night octopus in here. Yeah. And we have to keep them in here because this guy will escape. They will crawl out. So we, what we do is when we get Acropora in, if we find any pest crabs or crustaceans, we throw it in there. These guys also eat clams on the half shell. 
So if you're interested in a very intelligent invertebrate, we sell these for about $130. I believe this guy is on Diver's Den right now. Yep. The only Starting reason, out. yep, the only reason he wouldn't be there is if somebody bought him. So, so this should be available right now on our Divers Den section yeah. of our website. So if you're interested in, aqua, in an octopus, you got to have a tank. He's trying to get out. It's completely awesome. sealed up. Yeah. Completely sealed up. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Got somebody trying to escape here. <laughs> this is pretty cool. It's got red mangrove plants. We got these from our friend Julian Sprung of Two Little Fishies. And you do need a permit for these guys. And Julian was fun, uh, nice enough to get these growing for us and send them here. We've had them a couple years now. I was going to say, yeah. Was... As long as I can remember. Yeah, we got some nice corals. Got some scullies and button corals back there, and there's some big ones. Along with some big pajama cardinals. Oh, yeah. There you are. I always forget to look back here for the fish. Yeah. You know? So, again, with, with a lot of these bats, we put fish in there, and you know, tanks will do some algae control. Then we've got some big monster pajama cardinals. Got a beautiful big angel in there. Yeah, my old kid. I got a big place here we got a pair of Venustas, and a lot of times we will sell those as pairs. All right, Ian, do we have any other requests? Beautiful plate for uh, I don't know. That thing any other requests, a, guys? This deserves another shot. Yeah, that's that massive. Look at my hand. <laughs> massive. Pretty yeah, magnificent fox face. Fox face. That's a nice dark showing off real well under the Titanic here. So again, most of the lights we use in the facility, Ian, what do we got? Ecotech Marine? We got yeah, like Ecotech Marine radions above these lights here. These are all Gen 4s, correct? Uh, actually, yeah, these are Gen 3s right here, but um, you know, we've been the majority has been switching over to the Gen 4s lately, yeah. Yeah, personally, me, I like the AIs a lot. I like uh, all the AI Hydras, the Primes. Um, I guess for me, it's just the inclusion of the Reef Link that can kind of be a, a little bit of an extra step. But the Ecotex are a great product, and we definitely love using them in our facility. So for those of you just joining us, welcome to our open house tour. What we have here are some Captain Fred yellow tangs. Uh, we were fortunate enough to procure quite a few of these guys. Uh, we'll be able to sell them in a week or so. We just got them this week. Yeah, that's a UFO scalenia. They are probably about the size of a 50 cent piece. And from what I understand, they're about four months old. So we got these to Biota Aquariums who has a relationship with Rising Tide Conversation, or Converse, Conservation. Conservation, sorry, I've been talking gotcha, for man. hours. I gotcha. Who's been working with the Oceanic Institute of Hawaii. And I know Chad Cowan started this program with him, so props to him, super nice guy. I was yeah. fortunate enough to meet Chad at Aquatic Experience last year in Schaumburg. Well, Clayton, I'm really glad to hear that, uh, that you know, this live stream has really uh, given that good impression. I'm, I'm glad you're less apprehensive about ordering with us now. We totally understand the potential, uh, you know, apprehension about ordering fish over the internet, and we always make sure to take um, all the precautions we can to, um, um, to make sure that everything is, is arrived alive. And we have a guarantee for that. We have the 14 day arrived alive, stay, stay alive guarantee. As for all of the aquatic life, but our own uh, captive grown corals, they come with a 30 day guarantee. So That's right. Thank you for mentioning that. I always forget about the frags yep. and their 30 days. So. All right. Well, I think, you know, we've had a really good tour here today. We have. Uh, I think we need to start going help some of our other partners. Yeah, so uh, we're going to wrap it up here, and uh, we want to thank, thank you guys for joining us on our live feed and our live stream. And, uh, you know, we'll hope you catch you next time. Yeah, and if you're if you're new to Live Aquaria, oh, check us out on Instagram. Check out our fledgling YouTube channel. You can see a lot of our videos. Or just keep an eye on our Facebook page, our feed, especially this month with all the November specials yep. we've got coming up. So thanks a lot, everybody, for joining us. And, again, uh, I do respond to Facebook messages yep. through the inbox. Be patient with me. I do normal <laughs> business hours, not too often on the weekend, but I will get back to yep. you. So thanks for joining us, and uh, as I like to say, feed, siphon, repeat. All right, see you guys. Bye, everybody.